Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today I want to give you my first impressions and all my thoughts that I've collected so far after just about a day, less than a day of playing in the new update for Ant-Man and the Wasp. I've got a lot to get through, so I'm going to kind of go through it rapid fire. And then, you know, for the next few weeks, you should look for specific in-depth videos about each one of these topics because I don't yet have those exact opinions about the perfect uniform or the perfect this or the perfect that, but I just have a bunch of estimations and kind of feelings or gut or kind of intuitions but nothing concrete or 100 percent uh, accurate yet so maybe don't quote me for now uh jumping in right to it we have three new characters we've got um ghost we've got uh bill foster giant man goliath and then we've got wasp nadia van dyne i went ahead and i unlocked ghost so i don't yet have wasp i'll be able to get her tomorrow but my impression from the three new characters is that uh, Ghost seems to be the best character for a support role, maybe not as the main damage dealer, but definitely, especially with the uniform and the tier 2 passive, uh, someone that can basically buff every team, kind of like uh, Shuri or Valkyrie, somewhere in between, maybe their power level, maybe not quite as powerful as Shuri, but also occupying a pretty useful spot being a uh, speed villain, and the typing does not change whether you have the uniform or not, so that's really good. Uh, we'll talk about the uniform a little bit later, but just to link them up, uh, I do think that the character might be easier to play without the uniform, which is kind of strange to say. Uh, obviously the character will be stronger and have a higher potential overall with their uniform because of the buffs that you get from a uniform over here, 25% all attack at mythic, etc. But uh, due to certain skill changes, you might find that people are saying Ghost is better without the uniform. So that's just kind of an interesting tidbit. As far as the best overall uh, offensive character from this update, and remember, we only have three to choose from, I think it's definitely going to be Wasp from what I've seen in the skill previews and just the number of hits and the number of attacks and the kind of effects that she has on her skills. She doesn't have a uniform, so her potential isn't as high as Ghost's, but she seems to have just the better raw damage output uh, from what I've heard people say as well, having tier 1 wasps and testing those out, and what I saw and how the character kind of feels compared to other similar characters. Definitely higher damage than wasp that we have now, the Janet wasp that most people have at tier 2, uh, or at least 6 stars. And then we have Goliath. Goliath, I think, is a slightly better version of Giant Man, possibly better damage, but I'm not too impressed with him right now. I think he's probably the best suited for a Shadowland role, but uh, I wouldn't expect amazing things from him. You can definitely make him a powerful character if you invest a lot into him, but you know he is the free character, so you do kind of expect his power level to be a little bit lagging behind both Nadia and Ghost because they're both paywalls, so that kind of uh, comes true in this case, I think, at least so far. As far as the uniforms go, I've already talked about Ghost's uniform. Uh, it does enhance the Tier 2 passive. It does change from male to female, so there are some uh, irregularities or differences in terms of Shadowland. There aren't many stages that allow you to use speed villains and don't allow you to use male or female. That's usually not a tag that gets associated at the same time, but just keep that in mind because it might be a tag in the future, so it might make the uniform more or less useful technically. Uh, as far as more standout uniforms, I think for PvP, Wasp's uniform, Wasp's uniform is possibly the best option out of all of the new uniforms, mainly because her new fifth skill, Swarm Shield, will move with her. Instead of creating a bubble on the ground that gets stuck to the ground, it moves around with her. So especially in group fights like Alliance Conquest, Alliance Tournament, uh, King of the Hill Shadowland or Shadowland Rumbles where you have you plus two of your teammates at the same time or I guess in something like World Boss Invasion but that's really easy uh, this can actually protect all three characters with an immunity shield so that's fantastic I think it's very very cool but I wasn't very impressed with her damage with this uniform it didn't seem much better than her other uniforms and as you know Wasp has very low damage Ant-Man on the other hand seems to be kind of middle of the pack uh, damage is better and he's got four out of five iframes now so he's got tons of survivability when his tier 2 passive is not up so even if you have a tier 1 Ant-Man this might be a nice pickup for you I really like the uniform I love Ant-Man so I'm trying not to be biased and say that it's the best uniform here but it might be 
it might be the best uniform out of the new update. And then we have uh, Pimtron, which is the Giant Man uniform. It turns Giant Man from a hero combat to a universal villain. So this is a very good switch, very useful for Shadowland especially. Uh, outside of Shadowland, I think you're going to notice that he gets a big bump to damage but it comes at the cost of survivability and it's very easy to compare him to uh, Ultron because they play pretty similarly they've got some full like frontal skills where they use laser beams and they've got a skill where they summon clones uh, but I would say that Pimtron's clones are they appear to be a bit weaker than Ultron's clones the stats are the same it's 40% and 40% but Ultron can apply a guard hit to his clones that um, giant man Pimtron cannot but Giant Man Pimtron appears to have more damage overall. He has fewer iframes, no guard hit, uh, but he seems to have more damage overall. So I would I would recommend building him more defensively, but you can build him offensively and just play really carefully and safely. But it, it might be a bit difficult in certain game modes, but uh, he has an additional value attached to him in the Legendary Battle. And that's the next thing I want to talk about. The Legendary Battle has surprised a lot of people with the rewards, and I, for one, am very impressed with uh, the fact that Netmarble decided to up the ante, so to speak. Uh, as far as the Extreme Battle goes, it costs 2,500 crystals. You get a refund of 500 crystals through the different rewards brackets for clearing with a certain amount of HP left, but none of the crystal rewards are linked to characters or uniforms, so you don't have to worry about investing more crystals to get crystals back. So its total uh, cost is 2,000 crystals net cost. Uh, however, you're definitely going to want to purchase Pimtron's uniform if you get the extreme mode because, drumroll please, at the bottom here, for having Pimtron's uniform at Mythic and completing this one, you get a CTP selector. And this is a brand new item we've never seen before. I was shocked, pleasantly surprised to see them introduce this. I think I had talked about it in the past where it would be great for us to be able to select which CTP we wanted rather than being given the choice of usually either refinement or energy from the legendary battles and I think this is the best possible solution because frankly not everyone wants an energy CTP or a refinement CTP now is it a good idea to use this on a CTP of transcendence probably not but you have your options now available to you and more options for the same price is the best possible scenario so I'm very impressed that they did this I'm very happy with that and I think it makes this purchase this extreme battle probably the most valuable one uh, of the three that we've had to pay for. Uh, probably this one being the worst and this one being somewhere in the middle. So that's really cool. Uh, ultimately, I would have wanted them to go back and change the other previous CTPs, like the refinements from Hulk and the energies from Hela and Killmonger, change them to CTP selectors. But hopefully moving forward for any future legendary battles for you know, Captain Marvel, Avengers 4, Spider-Man, Far From Home, we get these selectors instead of uh, preset ones. So this is pretty cool. The fights themselves are actually quite fun and entertaining and they draw a lot from the movies. So uh, they haven't gotten any worse. If anything, Netmarble has refined their ability to make these legendary battles feel like you're in the movie. And I think it's very fun and very uh, fantastic. Additionally, Whew, do I have to give a long shout out to Alliance Raid. This is a very, very, yes, we got the second reward. This is a very, very fun game mode. It rewards having a large roster because you can play multiple times. The only gate to playing is having these Alliance tokens. So make sure you're donating to your Alliance every single day. Uh, if you don't have to spend Alliance tokens on anything in the shop, save them so you can play more Alliance raids. And just do the calculations ahead of time, how many members in your Alliance, how often they contribute, so that you can get this boss HP down to zero to collect all of the rewards. The rewards don't seem to be uh, terribly good consistently. I think there's a pretty wide range. Uh, the boxes that you get are one time only, I, I believe, uh, but we've seen as much as 200 Chaos Norn Stones from a box, which is amazing. Uh, that's like a week and a half's worth of World Boss Ultimate tries, maybe more, uh, all the way down to something like 60 Gear Up Kits, which is pretty terrible. But, you know, it's a possibility, so that's pretty good, and you get that basically for free. You just have to donate some money, uh, some gold rather, to get some tokens. As far as donating, I just want to remind you guys there is a donate, double donation event going on in your alliance, so if you're not in an alliance, definitely get in one ASAP. Donate. Your 100, your 1 million gold will turn into 200 tokens instead of just 100, so you have double, and then you have all those additional alliance store purchases like the hidden tickets and the boost points, which are the best ones to buy, uh, to spend your tokens on 
on top of Alliance Raid. But I'm very happy with Alliance Raid. I think the only thing that would make it better or the only thing to improve upon it uh, to add possibly as a secondary mode would be a co-op version because this one is still technically a single player game mode. You are playing, you are collectively working towards the same goal with your alliance to to lower that boss HP bar but every time you play you're zoning in with just your team of three and no one else so having another version of this uh, possibly having one against other alliances where you're racing to kill the same boss uh, and do more damage to that boss kind of like a mixture of alliance raid and world boss invasion and whoever gets first place gets the best reward that could be a possibility for the future but this is a fantastic job uh, and I've been calling for a new game mode for a long time, and this could absolutely be it. And look at that. It's right next to Shadowland. That's hype. Uh, really quickly for World Boss, I want to give you guys a tip for Ebony Maw. If you're trying to get those Universal Books for Thor's Tier 3, uh, he doesn't take almost any damage from uh, energy and physical attacks. You can see he has a boss special skill called Resistance. He reduces damage from physical attacks. My Winter Soldier and Spider-Man were doing one damage each. Uh, it has to be an elemental attack. So if you weren't familiar with the old world boss ultimate, this is the exact same setup that he had. So taking a character that does fire damage like Jean Grey or Inferno or Satana, lightning damage like Thor, mind damage like Emma Frost or Supergiant or Mysterio or Scarlet Witch, or uh, cold damage like Luna Snow, or sadly poison damage like Green Goblin. Probably don't do that one. Just stick to the other four. That's fine. Uh, so that is kind of my quick breakdown for all of the uh, kind of major changes to the game. We also have, really quickly, the changes to the lab. And we were correct in assuming that the screenshot was available showing purchases for uh, tokens. I haven't personally been able to confirm this, but other people have confirmed it. I've gotten some pretty awesome purchases in the store where they were all for gold. But we do have one free refresh and the other refreshes cost tokens. But the tokens have a much higher value now that you can actually purchase things with them rather than simply use it to refresh your item shop. So I think it significantly increases the value of the item shop overall. Uh, additionally, we do have some new packages in the store. I don't yet have a great way to quickly rate these ones but if you do look at them carefully I have rated these before because they've appeared in with different names you had the infinity war booster pack which is exactly the same as this one so you can just refer back to those uh, the only one that I would say is more unique and definitely worth a look is the independence day pack if you are a newer player and you have someone like the ultimates Nova anti-man or blue Marvel or a rare bio sub character like ghost like Spider-Man 2099, Luna Snow, and you want to mega tier to them because it saves you so much headache in bio subscriptions or in lab processors uh, and all those costs associated with that. But it is a pretty hefty price. It's 8,000, just over 8,000 crystals. And a lot of you guys are spending crystals now in uniforms or extreme packs or magnetos and stuff like that. So I can understand why this is just out of a lot of people's price range. I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, if you need it specifically for those characters, it is a good purchase. Otherwise, I would steer clear of it uh, just because you can get other characters to tier 2 without too much of a hassle uh, unless you're super impatient, in which case you're probably not even listening to what I'm saying. So let me know what you guys think of the Ant-Man and the Wasp update. I am ecstatic. I'm pretty... I'm like a 9 out of 10. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed with right now is Bill Foster and the Pimtron uniform kind of isolated from everything else and of course the awkwardness with the Janet uniform not being applied to Nadia properly but we can kind of settle that uh, and maybe we can find a way to make Pimtron stronger and a way to make Bill Foster better so let me know down in the comments below how you feel subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of my uploads and of course if you like what you see I hope to see you again tomorrow take care